Okay, everybody, thanks for showing up to our ongoing webinar series with AngelLog Mortgage Solutions. Of course, you've uh, shown up at the New Business Toolkit. This is, I think, our third or fourth time doing this, and it's been a great success, and uh, people have really enjoyed it and have taken advantage of it. So before I turn this over to Tom to start, uh, the way this will go down is Tom's going to open this up, give you some information about AngelLog products, how they work, uh, different scenarios, how those uh, how AngelLook has been able to help with that, which I think is going to trigger a lot of your brains to go, ah, I just had one of those, or, oh man, you know, I think I've got one of those, you know, so I think that'll be very helpful for you. So it'll probably help your existing pipeline right, right out of the chute. Uh, but then we're going to get into uh, another section that I'll do, which is, you know, how do we go find this business to, uh, to tap into this, you know, uh, still growing market uh, with plenty of room to grow. A couple housekeeping items. Uh, you should have a little questions box icon somewhere on your computer screen. You can type in questions into that box. And we encourage you to type questions in all the way through the webinar. So as we're progressing through the webinar, just things pop in your mind, just fire them in there. Don't worry about it if we don't get to your question at the end. So we will be answering them at the end, just so you know. But if we don't happen to get to yours at the end, it's okay. Angel looks going to get all those questions, and one of their account executives will reach out to you and answer the, the question for you directly. Yes, please, please send those because because Frank will stop and stop me from talking and and throw out a question, and we'll we'll address as many as we can. That's right. Yeah. So uh, do that. And the other thing I wanted to point out to you guys, I know this is a webinar, uh, and as you're watching webinars, things come up, right? Things things happen. You get pulled away if that something like that does happen to you, but you're thinking. I know I need to get started with these guys. Just put in the questions box, get me started, and then an account executive will reach out to you and make sure that they can work with you directly on how to get started with everything that we're about to show you. I feel like I'm forgetting something on the, on the, um, on, on, oh, yes. Uh, this is being recorded, just so you know. We record these webinars. It will be sent to you afterwards. The assets will be sent to you afterwards. That's one of our frequently asked questions. Uh, so, but keep in mind, guys, that this is a go-to webinar system. Sometimes the recordings, they fail. They don't work. It's not often. Lately, they've been really good about it, and it's been batting pretty much 99%. But every once in a while, you get a snafu, and it and it doesn't it doesn't work. So, what that means is, is if you can, put the cell phone away, ignore the email, pen, paper, take some notes. Uh, type in your questions as we go along so that you can get the most out of this in the event that we can't get you the recorded version for whatever reason. So, yes. uh, you know, I'm going to do this one last little bit before I turn it over to you, Tom, and that is um, you commented on today's show where we pointed out that very little uh, uh, product is getting done in the 620 and below uh, FICO score arena. And um, what uh, Tom pointed out to me, it was a very good point. All that really means is that there's so much room for it. You know, only 3% of the deals that are getting done are in that, that, in, in that arena. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people that through a non-QM product can get a home who have a six, below a 620 credit score. Below a 620 credit score does not necessarily mean that everything else is jacked up on that credit file. They could have great jobs. They could have some cash reserves, access to cash. They may have just had a credit event that took place. And when it comes to non-QM, they could possibly still get financing. So uh, there's a, there's great there's a lot of room to grow in this arena and uh, so today with today's webinar with what we show you we think you're going to see that and give you the tools that you can go out and start uh, diving into some of that business and gathering some of that business into the pipeline which is desperately needed right now. So with that I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to you Tom so you okay. can take it great. away. I'm going me... to make it the presenter here. Sounds like a plan. Screen. And I'll mute myself just to keep the noise level down uh, okay. on the webinar, but I will unmute and chime in uh, as, I, as I see fit. I see your screen. You're good see to go. Great. Yep. And I hear okay. you and all that good stuff. And if I see a question that I feel uh, warrants an interruption, I'll do that. Otherwise, we'll let you fly through and we'll address them uh, toward the end. So with that, take it away, Tom. All right. I think I got it. Um, good stuff. Thanks. Uh Thanks for the handoff, Frank. And um, really just first want to thank everybody for, for joining us today. Uh, as, as Frank mentioned, we've done this a couple of few times already, but I do think it's really timely. Um, we've seen uh, exponential growth of our business. I think 
Frank, you guys even talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I mean, we're just we're, we're setting records and it looks like August is going to be another record. And and it's really it has to do with a lot of things, but probably acceptance and education. That's really that's really what has changed in 20, 20, 000, or 2018 is is people are just they're accepting of non QM that, it, you know, it's not necessarily the mainstream where, you know, it's not Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and FHA, but it's non QM and, and people now are starting to understand it. So uh, to this day, though, we still, you know, the number one question we get is what do non QM loans look like? And so I think it's really important. Um, a lot of a lot of you on, on on this webinar might have kind of a preconceived notion of what non QM means. It's it's not it's not just it's just not and it's not a really one word answer or just one description. So I wanted to start, and I think this will help everybody uh, for us to kind of get this going. Is what do these loans actually look like? What is a non QM in 2018? What does it look like? So we really believe that the best thing is is to just show you some deals. These these are actual loans that we've closed for borrowers in the last 30, 60 days. Um, and now the pictures maybe are not of the homes, but just to kind of give you a reference, the scenarios are are absolutely true. And so I think if you take that and just and just understand, and then as as Frank jumps back on and kind of flows through some of the things he's going to talk about, uh, hopefully it'll all make sense to you. And and something that we've already touched on is that this is something that you can implement today. You, you don't have to wait. It's not something that you have to gear up for. Uh, we're going to show you, I'm going to give you lots of tools today. So uh, when we get off this, and again, thank you for spending an hour of your time. When we get off this, this webinar, you can, you can start uh, looking at originating non-QM loans. So with that, we'll just kind of jump right into it. And, and, and this first one is, is kind of a, one of our most common. It's, it's the borrower uh, who's trying to buy a house, but they've, they've had a foreclosure in their past and the foreclosure just has not seasoned enough. We call this a, a credit event. You know, they had something occur, foreclosure, bankruptcy, but in this scenario, it was the, a, a borrower was buying a $1.3 million house. So, you know, you're looking at jumbo dollars and, and those that originate jumbo loans know you have to have really clean credit for at least five and in most cases, seven years. So we have products that allow a borrower to not have to wait. And with what's going on in the market, the longer you wait, the more the house is gonna cost, it's gonna end up costing you as a buyer a lot more money to wait. And we've got other tools that you can look at, but here was a $1.3 million buyer, excuse me, a home that the buyer wanted to purchase, but had a foreclosure just a couple years ago. So a two year, two year ago, trying to get a, let's say a million dollar loan, that's just not going to happen. Uh, and in fact, I think in this case, it was even an over a million dollar loan. We, we can do up to a 90% loan to value without uh, mortgage insurance. But um, this, we have our portfolio select product and it doesn't really even matter the name of it, but as long as you're two years out, they, they were able to get this jumbo loan and we closed it in 21 days, uh, which, is another important fact that you know when you're doing business with Angel Oak, we understand you know more than 80% of our loans are purchase money transactions, and we understand when you're doing a purchase, you have there are lots of parties involved. There's realtors, there's sellers, there's realtors on both ends. You have contract dates, and we understand that even though maybe you, you found out late about this borrower situation, and we're getting the loan perhaps later in the process, we still have a closing date that we need to meet. So we're very focused on term times and getting these loans in our door and to the closing table as quickly and, and as efficiently as possible. So that was the story on this one. $1.3 million purchase, two years from a foreclosure, we've got the perfect portfolio program. Um, and, and I'm gonna show you with our quick quote, uh, how to actually start doing business with us. But that's a very common, uh, I'd say these credit event type scenarios are almost 50% of the non-QM volume. So jumbo loan amounts, uh, you know, up to two and a half, three million dollars, high LTVs, but without the seasoning required in the prime jumbo world. So moving on, um, 
a, another very common non-QM loan. And this is, this is the non-QM loan for the self-employed borrower. Uh, typically, these borrowers, they do not have credit issues. What they have are tax return income issues. So you've got a borrower with really good credit and they can have some deems on their credit. So it doesn't have to be perfect credit. But in this scenario, this was a loan we closed recently. They had a 758 credit score. So no credit issues at all. They have, uh, the, the borrowers makes $200,000 a year. However, what a self-employed borrowers have, generally they have good accountants. And you know one of the benefits of being a self-employed borrower is you get to write off a lot of you know, perhaps personal expenses. You get to run them through your business. And really the goal of an accountant is to limit your tax liability. And that's, that's how the tax laws are written. So this, in this situation, we had a borrower that made $200,000, but their net shown on their tax returns was 50,000. And then they're coming and trying to get a $750,000 loan. That you can't qualify for that with a $50,000 in income. So we have a bank statement product and there's a couple of ways to, uh, to structure the loan, but just in general, instead of looking at a borrower's tax returns, we don't look at tax returns at all. What we're looking at is their cash flow, either through their business or through their personal accounts, if they pay themselves from their business. And we look at their cash flow over either 12 months or 24 months, get that stream of income, and that's the income that we're going to use for them to qualify. So it's really simple loan. You know, a lot of people even have a misconception that bank statement loans are really, really hard. But uh, our customers will tell you that there's a little bit more uh, effort up front to, to gather the bank statements and, and to work on computing the income. But the best news is once that work has been done up front, these loans go through underwriting very quickly because income is already done. It's already calculated before a loan has even been submitted. So uh, you're talking about generally 700 plus credit scores. You don't have credit issues. All the things that might um, you know, perhaps sl slow a process down, that's taken away on this bank statement loan once the income and once the bank statements have been analyzed. So bank statement loans, big piece of our business, I'd say you know, that's another 40, 45% of, of the business. And something that, you know, I would say probably every originator that's that's on this call has probably had a, a self-employed borrower loan blow up because their income, their tax return income did not support the loan that they were trying to get. So these are pretty simple. You know, that, that's a really simple one that you, you've likely seen. Um, the, the, and the best thing, and you're going to talk about it more, Frank, is just realtors know these borrowers. They know these borrowers because they're one of these borrowers themselves. So, so they've, they've been trained post-crisis to kind of screen these, these uh, potential buyers out. And they, they know to ask, what do your tax returns look like? Not what kind of income do you have if they're self-employed, but, but now you can bring some alternatives around income that it's still, it's documented. They have the documentable uh, ability to repay. Uh, we love these loans. The performance of them has been just outstanding. So we're, we're, we're seeing a big push in, in this area. So I would say bank statements is, is kind of the, the, uh, another big category for you to pay attention to. Um, another really common sector of the non-QM is, is the non-owner investor type loans. Uh, investors, non-owner occupied business purpose loans don't have the same uh, ability to repay documentation requirement. So we have what we call, it's our investor cash flow. And instead of looking at the investor's income, we're looking at the income from the investment property and compare that to the debt that this uh, investor is going to have on that property. So that's where we kind of come up with a name. It's our investor cash flow. Uh, we're looking for borrowers, you know, preferably that are experienced investors. In fact, this scenario that I'm showing you, it was the investor's 19th investment property. And you, you can imagine if you had to do a fully documented income loan and they've got 19 properties, all of the documentation that be, would be required uh, to make that happen. So we have an investor cash flow loan. We're looking at a, an investor who's got good credit. We're going to verify their assets for down payment or 
uh, reserves. And then we're going to look at the, the cash flow of the property. And that cash flow for that property is what's going to help them qualify. So, so Tom, uh, on this yeah. one, we do have a, a quick question. Is just what was the down payment on this scenario, if you happen to know? Uh, uh, as little as 20% down. De depending on credit scores and, and and some other factors, but but twenty percent down, um, you know, an eighty percent loan to value. Good question. Okay, so I think we're we're going to change gears now to uh, to show you some other tools and and really the, the biggest one. If if you leave with just a couple nuggets today, if you leave simply with our website, angeloakms.com, I'll. I'll highlight it here for you on the, on the top of the screen, uh, angeloakms.com. If, if, if you remember that, uh, you're going to see all kinds of resources uh, at your disposal, and it's all right here on our website. So when you go to our website, a uh, couple quick things. Uh, first, our number one uh, usage of our website is right here. It's called Quick Quote. So you know we can talk about our programs and our guidelines and everything that it takes to get a loan done, but there's no need for you to remember any of that stuff. You know, I'd, I'd like you to remember credit events, you know, foreclosures, bankruptcies, uh, deed in lieu, things like that. Bank statement, some alternative income for self-employed borrowers and, and then investor cash flow for those investors, professional investors that, that aren't able to qualify or you don't, don't, they don't, don't want to qualify with their tax returns. But, but as far as program specifics, we built this tool called Quick Quote, and it's right here, a link on our website. Um, but it's it's a terrific tool, and and really, you, when you log on, you don't have to be approved with us, but you would just put in the name of your company. Uh, sorry, I put in the name of your company. We'll just say ABCD Lenders, and hit log in, and it's probably going to say that ABCD is not approved. Yep, and and if it is approved. Uh, we, we kind of build some other things behind the scene. If you are approved, if, if your company's already approved with us, but you put that in and then, th then, it, then it's easy. From there, you just put in a few pieces of data. So let's just start with some of these drop down boxes. We'll start with credit score, loan amount. Let's say this is a jumbo 750 to 999. Uh, loan to value, let's just say 80%. Uh, housing history, and we'll just say there's not been a foreclosure in the last 24 months. As soon as you input that, answer that fourth question, you start seeing options down here. And these options are the different programs that a borrower could qualify for. So if you, if you look at it and it, it'll show you a borrower paid rate, if you are approved with us and, and uh, your company is lender paid, it'll give you the lender paid rate. So you kind of can, can move back and forth through those. Um, but it, then it gives you some high level. Uh, and again, this is just for you to have an idea. Is this a loan that I could possibly make for this borrower? And let's say you just want to change so, some data points. Let's say I've got a 7, 680 score and I want to do uh, a 90% loan. It'll change automatically. It'll give you rates. Remember I, I mentioned earlier, we can do a 90% loan with no MI. So uh, this gives you some high level. You got to be for this platinum product, you gotta be 48 months out of a bankruptcy or a foreclosure, some reserve requirements, and then some other small details about the loan. So it's it's really it's really simple. You can change it from full doc to let's say we're gonna do bank statements. Again, it just changes on the fly for you so you understand uh, what program would possibly work for that. So simple as pie, very easy, very quick. That's why we call it a quick quote. Uh, and from here, the next piece is simple as well. Right underneath these options, you can see how, how the, it turns into a finger there, is you, you would just click the pre-qualification request. So you click that and select your account executive. And if, I'll show you some more on that if you don't know who that is. You can even say, I do not have one, but our list of all of our account executives are on here. So you pick that person, fill out some information about yourself, a little bit about the borrower and the transaction. Then you upload the 1008 if you have it, the 1003, the credit report. And if it is a bank statement loan, you can actually upload the bank statements. And we'll start doing an analysis of that. Make a few comments that you want your AE to know about this borrower, about the scenario. 
you click submit and that goes immediately to your account executive and within 24 hours of you hitting submit you'll have something back in writing and once you get that back you know you can take that to the bank you you take that to the borrower and and start talking about the terms uh, of the actual loan for that borrower so you, know, you can do all this the quick quote you can get done in less than a minute the prequal request might take you another few minutes but you know under five ten minutes you can do all of this and have it in front of uh, one of our account executives who's going to get you that that answer back in writing so quick easy to the point uh, again the quick quote is something you can mess around with it you, you can change it uh, change the scenario real quick and it'll, and it'll change there for you Hey, um, real quick here. Uh, yes. There are a couple of questions rolling in. This is a perfect time to, to ask them, Tom. One of them I just I wanted to point out is uh, um, uh, uh, a gentleman named Michael just said this. Hey, no question, just a comment. I just closed an Angel Oak mortgage brokered loan last week. First time I brokered a loan in, in around 10 years, and we closed it in roughly three weeks very smooth and great experience overall i love it um you know that that's not a shell either i just want you to know i don't know who michael is he just, that, he just that's not a like paid it. advertisement i, I promise uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's great thank another, you michael for the comment yeah another question there's two questions that kind of tie together here and they're asking about seasoning on foreclosure the one question is is when do you start your seasoning on your foreclosure at angel oak is it when the foreclosure started and the foreclosure finished when it, it when it's, does that it, clock start and yeah. what is the minimum clock what is the minimum for you guys somebody's asking what if our foreclosures in eight was eight months ago can we do that absolutely yeah uh, no i'm glad that's a really good question so it is when the foreclosure is completed not when it's not when the process began because you know in some states that can take a long time so it does have to be completed and that's kind of industry standard you know the, the seasoning begins when the the event is completed but we will do one day out of a foreclosure so we have products that in fact we could change it right here to uh, uh we'll just say foreclosure in the last 12 months so we change that and oh, i've still got that on a bank statement can't do a bank statement um uh let's see <laughs> um there we go so so you can see one day at 80 percent that that's what we can do um uh, so eight months i think was a scenario you mentioned frank that that's something that we can get done you know what we're going to look for um is you know does that loan make sense if they if they had let's say a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage and they foreclosed on it and then they want a million dollar loan eight months later that's probably not a scenario that's going to work but if it's the other way around let's say somebody was stretched too thin they had too big of a mortgage they were upside down on a property they made a you know conscious decision to walk away from it and they want to right size now based on their income they've got some money or some access to funds you know a common question we get is are gifts allowed and the answer is absolutely yes so you can get gift funds for a down payment they have a documentable ability to repay, then we really we require no seasoning uh, from a foreclosure. So it was kind of a long answer, but <laughs> it was good, and it's exactly what they were looking for. I got another one here, and then we can we can move on. Um, on your bank statement product, do you require a profit and loss from the CPA? Uh, so there are two different scenarios. Uh, if it is a business bank statement. You, the bar we we require either either a borrower prepared prof, profit and loss or a CPA a, what we call just an expense letter. They don't have to provide us an entire P&L. They just need to tell us that this business uh, has this expense lo level over the last uh, period of time. So P and the only P&L would be borrower prepared. Great. Yeah, that that's that's uh, pretty much it for now. There's a couple more. They can we can field these at the end. They're not uh, okay. sensitive. So. All right. Great. So a couple other things I'd like to show on our website. I'll go back to our uh, homepage. But the the first is you know we've talked already quite a bit about our local AE and you having a local AE. This is where you would find that AE. It's under Contact Angel Oak, and you can see it right here. The very first drop down box is Find an AE, and when you click on that a map pops up 
And all you have to do, let's say you're in Arizona, you would just click on Arizona and it would pop up who covers that area for us uh, and contact information. You can email them directly from that. You can fill out your name and information and we'll get back to you if you prefer to do it that way. So we try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, and again, the whole, the, you know, whatever state you're in, just, just click on it. I can tell you there's a few gray states here and we're looking uh, to, to get licenses in, in those in the near future as well. So uh, another popular spot on our website, um, if you are not approved with us, the broker package is right here. You just click on it and you can download the broker package and uh, explanation and how to uh, upload it to us and all that. I would first, you know, before you really submitted it, please contact your local account executive from that map I, I just showed you, they can walk you through it and, and, and get that broker package uh, submitted for you and, and, and get the process going. Approval takes four or five business days and then you're ready to close loans. In the meantime though, the AE can, you can still use the quick quote, you can submit pre-quals, the AE can approve, pre-approve a deal for you while the approval is going on. So when the approval comes through, then you can submit that loan and, 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 and get it ready to get closed. So another place that I think is really important on our webinar, or excuse me, on our website for this webinar is once you are approved, once you are approved, you'll see right here, it says log in and you get to log in when you're approved with us. So you would click on that button and it would redirect you. Um, and a couple of resources here, we have account managers that support all of our account executives. So if you're not sure of account manager's contact information, uh, Michael Timpson heads it up, but every account manager and their contact information is listed. But when you're approved, you would sign up with us. And right here, you just put in your username and password, and you'd get one sent to you when you are approved. But the cool part about our portal is you can see turn times, and again, all the account manager support we provide. Uh, your pipeline is here, but my favorite part is this marketing portal. And you're going to talk more about it, Frank, but this is where you can actually go into our uh, website, into this portal, log in, look at all of our products. Let's say you want, you want a bank statement flyer. You can click on this and there's a flyer, but I want to point something out to you. It says nothing about Angel Oak on the entire flyer. So you would uh, input your logo right here at the top put your name and information, your contact information, your NMLS number, and you could save that, you could print it, you can email it, you could post it to social media, whatever you wanna do, this is your flyer. So uh, we have a whole collection of those as, as you could see in the prior page. We also have some what we call whiteboard videos, but these are really catchy one minute videos. Again, they say nothing about Angel Oak, but you could put them out on social media as a, a product that you're offering. So won't play one now, but you can you can see those on our website. And, and once you're approved, you have access to, to download these, these flyers and videos yourself. So pretty cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Can get you, all get right. You yeah, so I think you covered all that pretty good. There's a few questions here. We'll leave them to the end for the sake of time. Um, okay. If you're ready, we'll go ahead and segue into the second half. Okay, awesome. Okay, great, great. So hang tight, guys. Uh, all righty. Okay, so now I'm going to bring up my screen here, and I'm going to push play, and I'll show my screen in just a second. And I'll just confirm that you can see it. You should be able to see my screen now. Can you see it, Tom? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. All right, here we go, guys. So, oops, that didn't work. <laughs> oh, here, I got it. This is awesome. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now we're working. Sorry about that. Okay, guys. So with with Tom there, we 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 saw, um, and Tom, you know what? Just for the sake of uh, the noise, I'm going to go ahead and mm -hmm. mute you. But you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, you did. Thanks. Great. Um, so um, Tom went into obviously some of the scenarios and some of the products uh, that Angelo has. They have a lot more, and that quick quote is super cool. And before I even get started, uh, I'm just going to show you what one thing you can do is 
if you go on your smartphone to the Angel Oak website through your web browser on your smartphone and you click on Quick Quote, uh, from there you can add that that web page, that Quick Quote web page, web uh, link to your to the home screen of your smartphone. You can just Google how to do that, how to add website to my home page on my iPhone or on my Android or or whatever it is you're 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 doing. It's really easy to do, and I don't know if you can see it, but I have it I have it on mine. And so if I ever mount the field or anything like that, all I have to do is click on it, and it brings me straight to it brings me straight to the uh, to the Angel Oak Angel Oak Quick Quote. So if you're out in the field, you can make use of that really easily. Again, it's just really simple to do. Just on your phone browser, you know, go to angeloakms.com and then click on Quick Quote, and that's what'll be up on your screen. And then the, if you Google how to do it, there's a way to just add that to your homepage. So, and, and Frank, to make it even even easier for people, we'll send yeah. out those instructions after the webinar. So they don't have to Google it. We'll have it's just a few clicks, like you said. It's it's really simple. It's really simple to do. Yeah. If you if you just yeah, the only reason I suggest Google it, Tom, is there might be a little YouTube video or something where somebody oh, yeah, yeah. If, it, sure. if it's hard to understand our directions, you know, you can find it. <laughs> it's very simple to do. No doubt. So anyway, uh, Tom went over all uh, went over the scenarios, went over some of the ways that um, uh, went over some of the products that are available, that type of thing. The quick quote is just so cool. Uh, and so what I'm going to touch base on now, guys, is, is well, let's go find some of this business. Um, if, how do we, you know, get this business in the door? Where do we locate it? How do we find it? And really, it just comes down to awareness is what it comes down to is making people aware. And so what I'm going to do is, um, and I think I went too far. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is talk about how we can get that done. And the first thing that I'm going to talk about is what I call referral based targeting. So we want to target some new people and we do it. We want to do it. We can do it a couple of different ways. And one of the ways we can do it is by actually getting referrals to to talk to. And this would really come down to your real estate partners and your CPAs. And you've already got some real estate partners, you've already got some CPAs, so we're going to consider those are in the can, right? So we can go up and start talking to them about non-QM products right away. But what I'm going to look at for you guys is let's say we want to add more, right? We want to grow that. We want to grow our realtor base, we want to grow our CPA base, and we can use the non-QM products that Angel Oak offers to Go ahead and grow that referral base and we can do it by referral based targeting and so what i mean by that is is you could do something like this you can you can utilize social media instant messaging and email right to find new connections and the way that you do that is with this simple quote here or this simple statement so you could go and make one of those facebook memes you know whatever they are with you know you can type something in and make it the color with the with the text and this is something that you could say you could say i'm looking to connect with some real estate agents and cpas that i can trust if you have a recommendation can you send me their contact info thanks and uh you could do that through im and you could do that through your email database and you just say hey i'm just looking for some people that i can trust and if you know anybody, can you send them my way? And specifically saying real estate agents and CPAs. And you'd be surprised at how willing people are to send you people's info. You know, you'll get people say, oh, my CPA is great. Here's his name and number. Oh, my real estate agent was great. Here's their name and number. And you'll be able to gather some names and numbers of some targets that you can start to talk to uh, with this simple phrase that you can just get out there. And again, I would make use of it through social media, uh, IM, email. And even phone, if you're so, if if you if you feel so inclined, but uh, you will be able to find some new people that you can talk to in this in this way. Once you get some referrals, guys, because you will get them, people will send you their CPA, send you the real estate people that they like, that type of a thing. Do a little research on these new targets and just Google them, look them up on LinkedIn, look them up on Facebook, see if you can find them before you reach out to them. And the reason that we want to do this, guys, is just so we kind of get a little bit of a feel for who these individuals are, get, kind of get to know them a little bit before we even reach out to them. Uh, and that becomes beneficial when you're talking to them because you'll already kind of have a sense of who they are and what they enjoy, uh, you know, what they're into, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, so it's just very, very helpful when you have your initial phone call to them, which is going to be kind of a cold call, but kind of not a cold call because you have a mutual friend, right? So, but before we make our call, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we've got, got a certain structure around our head and you're gonna get these 
presentation, so don't worry. You, you don't have to write this stuff down. You'll get it. But you may want to have this little screen available to you or print it out before you make your call just to get these things in your head before you reach out to them. You know, we're going to definitely want to identify ourselves, let them know why we're calling. Uh, let them know we're making a connection through a mutual contact or association. So so-and-so referred me to you, right? Uh, and the next one says, recognize, right? Say something nice about the prospect, right? So, um, you know, let them know that you've taken the time to look them up or, 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 or whatever. I wouldn't say I look you up, but I would say, hey, I saw you. You know, you have a kid that goes to the same school as mine goes to, you know, whatever. I don't know, whatever, anything. But um, if you find some common ground in your research of them, uh, you can lay that out to them or at least mention that to them. And again, it just makes them feel like a little more comfortable. First of all, you're referred by somebody that they already know, their client, right? Secondly, you know a little bit of something about them that you can you might be able to put into the conversation. Then, of course, the value proposition. Here's why I'm calling you, and we'll go over the script on what that is, right? Then, of course, make sure we listen to them when they respond to us so we can really hear what they're saying. Um, I like the... I forget who said it, but uh, one of the great sales rates out there says most salespeople, when they listen, they're just waiting for for their turn to talk again. You know, and it's uh, it's uh, that's not how we should listen. We should really listen to genuinely hear what they're saying because if we do that, then we could probably have a better response to them, right? And all we're trying to do is get a commitment from these guys that maybe meet them for coffee or something like that to go over the Angel Oak products and how it can help them out. Uh, and because if we can meet with them face to face, which is preferred. Uh, then you all know this. If you can meet somebody face to face, spend a little time with them, there's a lot better rapport building uh, uh, going on at that particular moment, right? We get we get to know them a little better. They get to know us a little better. They get to trust us a little more. And you know, honestly, we get to trust them a little more. Get to know them a little bit better. So before we make our call, we just kind of want to get our head straight, uh, and then we want to go ahead and dive into our call. For a real real estate agent, when you call them, you could say something like this. And again, you're going to get the copy of all this, so uh, you're going to you're, you're, you don't have to write this stuff down, but for the realtors, it's very simple. If they answer the phone, you say, hey, it's Frank with ABC Mortgage. I was referred to you by you know, Jan Smith. Uh, I'm calling because I have loan products that can help borrowers that don't fit into your typical conventional or government loan financing. I was hoping I could drop by or meet you for some coffee to show you what I can do in, these ca uh, in case you come across a borrower that wants to buy but can't get traditional financing. Uh, can we get together sometime this week or next week? That's all you're trying to do. If you think about it, we've got a nice little script here. We're being referred by somebody they already know, so there's a little bit of trust built in, right? We're providing some value. At this point, you might have a little conversation where that research on them might come into play and help you out a little bit to further build some trust, some rapport. But all we're trying to do is get an appointment. I got I, I have to believe that if you, if you made a handful of calls like this, you're definitely going to be able to get people. Uh, you'll definitely get real estate and say, sure, let's get together. I, in fact, I know you will. Me and Brian do Facebook lives all the time where we just absolutely cold call real estate agents to set up appointments for other people and we do it easy. So I know this would be easy for you to do. It's not hard. For CPAs, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, you're going to call them. This is Frank with ABC Mortgage Company. I was referred to by, you know, Jan Smith. I'm calling because I've got loan products that can specifically help self-employed borrowers that don't fit into typical conventional or government financing. I was hoping I could drop by, meet you for some coffee, show you what I can do. In case you come across a client that fits this, who's trying to refinance their home or buy a home that can't get traditional financing due to their tax returns, and you doing such a great job, <laughs> uh, can we get together this week or next week? Again, you know, if you can get a handful of CPAs that know you have these products for their self-employed borrowers, you'll definitely become an asset to them, and you'll definitely get referrals from them. And it's all a numbers game, guys. I mean, if you have one CPA, that's going to generate a certain amount of referrals in a year. If you have 10, you know, that's going to times that by 10. It's that simple. Uh, so very, very simple script for our real estate agents and our CPAs, and I'm looking at referral-based targeting for them, guys, where I'm, I'm reaching, when you're able to call those people and say, so-and-so gave me your number, that changes everything for these people. You're, 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 you're going to be um, calling them saying, one of your past clients or one of your friends gave me your number. So that changes everything, and that's the whole definition of the referral-based targeting, and that's how I would go about doing it. Hey, Frank, if I could just jump yeah. yeah, just about the CPA, you know, the, the CPAs, what's fabulous about them is they know which of their clients are wanting to buy a house and they know which ones that really can afford to buy a house. So they kind of pre-qualify them for you. They're not going to send you 
the person who has no revenue and no income and bad credit, not, you know, all the things that would stop them from being able to qualify for a loan, they probably have in their book of business, these borrowers that they've, they've not known to, how to advise them. They've just said, well, you know, Fannie Mae requires two years tax returns and it'd be a lot smarter for you to continue to let me do my job and you have a lower tax bill than, than, than buy a house. So, you know, I, the, to me is just knowing that these CPAs and the realtors, you know, certainly the realtors, they have the need, they, ha they know these people and you're just, you're providing a service that, that they've been looking for. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, a lot of self-employed people, especially the successful ones, uh, you know, they're, they're your jumbo targets too. So really a sweet spot for the Angel Oak products. I mean, just such a sweet spot. Okay, let's talk about this research-based targeting. And what I'm going to look at here, guys, are builders, and believe it or not, small banks and credit unions. And just stand by, and you'll see what we're talking about here. Uh, so the way that I, I look at this, and I've done this many times in the past, is you take advantage of Google Maps. And it's a pretty kind of a simple thing to do and, and pretty clever. So, so I, I opened up Google Maps, and I took a look at where I'm located. I'm here in Vacaville, right? And this is about a 50 mile radius, 50 or 60 mile radius. So I just kind of made a circle here, it's about a 50 or 60 mile radius. And look at all the cities I have available to me. I have a lot of cities out here, right, within that radius. And I picked a 50 to 60 mile radius because if I'm going to go out one day a week and start calling on some builders or some some uh, small banks and credit unions, right, um, you know, I'm going to make a day of it, right? I'm going to make a day of it. So I'm going to. You know, get into the office, get a little bit of work done for an hour or two, and I'm going to hit the field, man. I'm going to have my route planned. And I'm going to go out. I'm going to start, and I'm going to call on some some builders. I might call on two or three a day. You know, in that day, I might call on a couple of builders that day and a couple of small banks. But I'm going to make you know a good day of it. So a 50 mile radius is pretty good, depending on traffic and how it is where you live. You know, it might take half the day to do that. You know, or most of the day. But uh, that's what I'm going to do. The nice thing about the non-QM products, guys, with Angel Oak is you can expand your reach. I know a, a, a lot of people really do want to deal with just a lender who's very localized to them. Uh, for example, we're here in Vacaville, and over here is Napa, and it looks very close, and it is very close, but these guys don't want to deal with anybody from Vacaville or Fairfield. They just don't, right? However... If I'm the only guy that can get the deal done, they don't care. So with the non-QM products, I become a guy that's kind of indispensable. Uh, and even though I'm going to travel 20, 30 minutes, they're not going to mind. That's why I'm saying you can expand your reach with these non-QM products, especially if you're going to dive into the builder and small banks and credit unions. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of figure out what my reach is and expand it and kind of look at that and kind of get a mental picture of where I can go and look at all the different cities that I can go to. So that's kind of neat. Then what I'm going to do is kind of plan my route, and I would definitely do this at least once a week. I hope once a week you're just going out in the field and physically going into real estate offices and saying hi to people and that kind of a thing because that's just clutch. It's just really important to do. Uh, but now we could take another day a week and do, do a little bit of this, some of this targeted marketing, right? So I'm going to plan my route. And so if you look what I did here, I'm still in Google Maps, all right? And I typed in uh, Solano County Credit Union. So I figured, okay, let me go after small banks and credit unions. And so I typed that in and look what showed up. I mean, all these little credit unions showed up right here, right? How wonderful is this? I've got a target of 11 search results here that are, and these are, you know, less than 50 miles for me. These are like 30 miles, 20 miles, 10 miles away, right? If that. And I've got 11 targets. Now, small banks and credit unions, Tom and I love this one, just Keep in mind, uh, these small banks and credit unions that are in your area, most of them are your absolute plain vanilla lenders. They will only do, you know, your agency stuff. They're going to do Fannie Freddie, maybe some Govy. Most of the time, it's not even Govy, uh, but they'll do that, right? That's all they really do. Non-QM, no way. Most of them don't do that. And you keep in mind, too, a lot of these small banks and credit unions, they have mortgage divisions. They have loan originators who literally sit in those banks and wait, right, for their customers to say, hey, I need a mortgage. Uh, so that's how it operates. 
so for you to be able to go out and offer those loan officers in those small banks and credit unions a solution for borrowers that they simply can't help because they simply don't have the product, you know, so that they can refer their clients to someone, which makes them look good, is a is a big uh, is a, a smart thing to do, right? To get in connect, connected to these guys. So using Google Maps, I just put in Solano County Credit Union, right? You can tailor your search to however you feel fit. I've got 11 targets here. What I would do is you can see, you can click on every one of these, right? And you'll get the phone number. Before I, before I went and called on any small banks and credit unions, I would call each of them and I would make sure that they do indeed offer mortgages. Some of them don't, but if they do offer mortgages, I'd ask, do you have a mortgage originator or loan officer on site? And they would tell me yes or no. So I would narrow down my, my list of who I'm gonna go call on. So out of 11, maybe there's five or six that offer mortgages. They have a mortgage originator on site, right? I'm just going to go drop in on that guy. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drop in. But let's go ahead and continue down the road. Here's my here's my target. I can plan my route from here, right? Uh, how about this? Builders, the same thing, exact same thing. I just put in new homes, right? It already knows. Google already knows where I'm located. So it's going to grab new home builders in my area. And so when I type that in, several things popped up. Okay. In fact, there was 20 results. Now, not all of these are subdivisions that have, you know, an agent sitting there, but you'll be able to tell if they are. Okay. Um, if they are, it'll be obvious that it's not a corporate office. It'll be obvious from clicking on the websites or whatever, you'll know that it's a su an actual subdivision. Okay. So again, I would just do your research. I would figure out, you know, out of the 20 results, maybe that winds up being seven that are actual subdivisions. I would plan my route, right? And I would make my trip out there. Um, I would call them first if you can, talk to the agent on, on staff and see, do you have, you know, financing that's already available in there? Do you have an in-house lender? Are they on site? You know, that kind of a thing. Kind of a thing. Um, if they have a lender who's there on site, maybe I don't go to that one. But if they say, yeah, we offer lending, they're not on site, we give them a card or whatever the case may be, I'm definitely going in there, right? Um, and then I would make my rounds. I'd plan my route. I'd figure out what my best targets are, plan my route, and I would get going. I would get moving. And, and uh, I would go on to Angel Oak's website, and I would print my appropriate marketing materials, and I'd put my logos on them, and I'd put my name in there, and I'd run on out to these small credit, small banks and credit unions, and these builders is what I would do. And here's your scripting. For builders, it's pretty simple. When you walk in, you're going to see the agents that's there, and you're just going to say, I'm just in the area calling on new home builders. See if you have any recent turndowns that you might need me to take a look at. I've got products designed to help borrowers that don't fit traditional Fannie Freddie government loans. Is there anything you'd like me to take a look at? Obviously, if they say yes, take a look at it. If no, say, hey, no problem. Here's a flyer. Here's my card. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if a situation arises or you've got somebody who doesn't fit the traditional Fannie Freddie mold. I should take a look at it because I can probably help you out. Okay. Another thing I'm going to point out to you guys, and here's the script for the small banks. Uh, we're going to get into this, but keep in mind, your first time out to these builders, I tell you what, you're going to feel really good about yourself. It's like going to the gym. You know, If you don't go a lot, when you finally do go and you walk out of there, you feel good. I did it because it was a good experience. This is the way it's going to be. But where we tend to fail on this, guys, is not following up and not going back again. A lot of loan officers will go out once. 99 of them will go out once. Only one of them will go out, you know, five times, 10 times. So this is the kind of thing where you have to make it part of your routine. I think field work should be a part of every loan originator's routine. I think two days a week of an originator should be in the field. I think it should be out in real estate offices. I think it should be out at um, uh, events. You know what I mean? The the um, the fundraisers, those types of things. Twice a week, you should be out, but primarily in in the office, real estate office, just out there calling on real estate agents, physically getting in the office, leaving cards, flyers, whatever the case may be. Uh, and then in this case too, especially with the non-QM products, you should be out there in those builders. You should be out there talking to CPAs. You should be out there, um, uh, small banks, that type of a thing, uh, credit unions trying to get this business in the door. If you did this twice a week, so if once a week you were devoted to builders, small banks and credit unions, once a week you were devoted to real estate agents, out there physically getting your face out there, you are guaranteed to grow your pipeline. Guaranteed. It can, it, it will absolutely work. It, it will not fail. We fail. 
if we just don't we don't stay consistent with it. But if you can, uh, it'll work. So with uh, small bank credit, I think, I think that was a good closing. You should just close right there. <laughs> Two days a week, just do it. Guaranteed. We'll send it you the webinar. <laughs> I mean, that's what else is there to say? And there isn't, you know. Uh, this script here for the small banks and credit union loan officer, you go to see the loan officer, and I won't read it word for word. You can digest it on your own. But basically just saying, hey, man, I'm just here. I don't know if you offer non-QM or not. You know, do you? And if they say, no, we don't. Say, I do. Here's my card. I don't want to step on your toes. I know you got real estate agents. This is especially good, guys, if these guys are outside of your local area. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. You can even tell the guy, I'm 50 miles away from you, man. So I'm not going to be walking on your real estate agent's toes or anything like that. You know, I'm far away, but I can handle these non-QM deals. If you send them my way, your customer will feel great. At least you referred them to somebody who can handle their deal. You know, that's that's how these would work. So, uh, again, follow up, follow up, follow up. Get these guys into your CRM. Make your initial calls the first time out. Put them into a CRM. Follow up with them on the phone. Follow up with email. And make those visits twice a week, man. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, Tom. And I think that would be a great thing to do. So uh, what we'll do is, is um, I think we're ready to go ahead and dive into some questions, Tom, okay. if, you're, yeah. if you're ready for that. If you can, okay, if you can still me hear me, let's, let's do it. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here real quick, and they'll just go back to the main page. Okay. Uh, and uh, we will now dive into some questions and let everybody get back along their day. Okay, and let's see what I got. Here I go. Oh, not too bad. Yay. Okay. All right. Okay, I did this one already. I did this one already. We did this one already. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Can you do anything for somebody who's currently delinquent on their mortgage, but they have lots of equity and want a consolidation loan? <clears throat> yes, debt consolidations, we do a lot. Um, and kind of what I mentioned earlier, when when it makes sense. If somebody's having a hard time paying their mortgage or paying their other bills because they're drowning in debt, but we can put them in a loan that's going to consolidate that debt, reduce their monthly expenditures, and put them in a better situation, yes. Those are the loans that we do. Uh, great question. Do a lot of them. And, uh, and we're seeing now as People now have some equity built up in their homes, and you know what? Why carry a lot of consumer debt at, at really high interest rates? We know people can can choke on that. So, so yeah, debt consolidation all, all the time. So, do you you guys only do non QM, right? You don't do any of the agency stuff. No agency. We are a non QM lender only. Okay. Uh, what about exceptions? So everybody has guidelines. Do you make exceptions to yours? <clears throat> so, you know, I think trying to paint the picture here of, of we have guidelines for sure, but we're wanting to make good loans for good borrowers that have the ability to repay. And, you know, they've righted whatever their, their situation that, that went, went off track, they're back on track. We make exceptions all the time. So, you know, that's really where uh, building the relationship with our local account executive, submitting those prequals, putting the little situation about, about that borrower scenario, we're going to look at it, even if it falls outside of our guidelines, there's a good chance. I think the last uh, number I saw, over 30, 35% of our loans that we closed, we made some type of exception to our guidelines. Wow. We do it all the time. Um, is the LE, uh, the loan estimator, completed by Angel Oak or the broker loan officer? <clears throat> we, w the, the broker would uh, submit a, a disclosure request and we'll create the loan um, the loan estimate, supply it to the broker, but then we'll deliver it directly to the borrower. So okay, great. Great. approved, but uh, Angel Oak provided. Oh, this is interesting. If I'm a realtor, can I be hooked up with a way to pull up credit? So we could get that from, we could get that form filled out and send it to them. <laughs> A real, real estate agent wants to bypass the LO and just go straight oh, to Angel on. Oak. <laughs> come on, the loan officers on this on this webinar, do you hear that? We have a realtor that wants to do these loans. Right. Give us that her his or her information. We'll get it to one of our approved customers. Yeah, I would say for the realtor, go to the Angel Oak uh, website. Go find an account executive in your area. Yes. Call that account executive and say, 
give me a loan officer in my city who does does business with you so that I can get some business going. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what I would do. Uh, <laughs> good question, though. Um, okay. What documents are required to pre-qualify? To, well, oh, to, say, wait, 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 wait. It's oh, sorry. Sorry, non-investors. Sorry. I don't know what that, what they mean by non, uh, non uh, means an owner-occupied transaction. Non owner-occupied investor property. So, yeah. so you know, I, I would say for pre-qualification, we're going to need 1008, 1003, and credit report. That's really it. Then if 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 it's a full loan to be underwritten and it's a fully documented loan, we're going to need the same thing that you need on your A paper Fannie Mae loans. We, we need tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements. We need the same thing. So it's it's really it's really not different than any of those uh, those loans. Somebody's that, asking me, uh, what do you recommend on the follow up with builders and small banks and credit unions? If you're asking how often, which I think is what's being asked, uh, Virginia, I would do those guys at least every two weeks. So I would again, I'd be I'd be in the field twice a week. One with one of those days, I'm focused on my real estate offices. The next day of that week, I'm focused on builders and small banks and credit unions. And keep in mind, when it comes to builders and small banks and credit unions, there's going to be a lot of those. So there might be in your area of 50, 60 miles, literally, you might have 50, you know, other things to call on. So one week, just try and get five. The next week, try and get another five. You know what I mean? Follow right. up with the old ones, you know, like every couple of weeks, you know, either on the phone. Or if you've got good ones where you've already gotten starting to get some referrals, go back and visit those offices on a pretty consistent basis, right? Because what we're trying to find is, I, I was in the Brian Buffini coaching, right? And they have A, B, and C referral partners. You know, A referral partners are guys that send you referrals all the time. You want to stay in touch with those guys more often, right? So as you're going through this process and if you start to find some small banks and credit unions right uh that are starting to you got a couple loan officers out there that are actually doing doing you some love giving you some love pay a little more attention to those guys once a week you know put them in a different list at least a phone call you know once a week try and get out and see them every couple of weeks that kind of a thing and just keep going through that list of targets and so you can build up 10 or 15 solid referral partners either builder or small bank credit union or both and one thing that I've seen that a lot of salespeople miss uh, is is they don't follow up because it, maybe the first you know their first call they didn't hit a home run. But you you really have to see somebody three, four, maybe even five times because this is you know you're building a relationship, you're building trust, and that doesn't happen in the first call in a five minute, 10, 15 minute meeting. You you really you know, you have to follow up. So you may, the ABC, I, I agree with that hundred percent, but don't, don't give up on them too early. They, you know, you might put them in a C, they're really an A, you just didn't, you didn't see them four times. So sure, absolutely. four times before you start categorizing what kind of potential that, that customer is. Right. Yeah. It's, I, you know, here's the thing, we're, we're, we're done here and yeah, they're saying thank you. Um, <laughs> um, but um the thing about field work too, guys, is I always enjoyed it. And, and the reason why is, is because it's so easy to get trapped in the office in front of a computer screen. It's just so easy. And it's, and when that happens, it's easy to stagnate and just fade away. It's, it's easy to not prospect. It's easy to not get new business in the door because you're just getting caught in the funk of your inbox. You know, and and it's easy to do that. If you force yourself to go out in the field two times a week, I guarantee you, you're going to get new business. It's great because not only are you just out of the office doing something productive, getting a business, but there's fresh air, there's sunshine. You know, you're going to stop and get lunch somewhere that maybe you haven't gotten lunch before. You know what I mean? It's just everything about it is rewarding. Everything about field work is incredibly rewarding you know and when you walk into an office if you got any apprehension to walk into an office that you haven't been in there before you're a little nervous about it or whatever just remember this man some will some won't so what you know it doesn't matter it just doesn't matter you just go in there and you say i'm here this is who i am this is what i do anybody need my help and if people blow you off and fluff you off so what there's another there's another office and you know, they'll probably be receptive to you. Oh, what do you got? Hey, who are you? I don't know you. You know, I mean, it's just, just go, just go. 
Love it. Good stuff. You nailed it. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, the questions that you've asked, if we didn't get to you, which we pretty much covered them all, um, you will get an, an account executive to reach out to you directly. Don't worry about that. And uh, we will be getting this material out to you, the recording and the, the, the assets, as we said. Uh, you should get those probably by tomorrow at the latest. And uh, with that, stay tuned to Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions and the National Real Estate Post for our ongoing webinar series. And we appreciate you guys being here and taking the time. We hope the information was good and you can make use of it right away. Awesome. All right, Tom. Have a good one, man. We'll catch everybody later. Thank you, Frank. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.